Good morning, everyone. We're, we're ready for an awards presentation. I'm Nancy Fund, uh, an ambassador and, and founder and managing partner of DBL Investors in uh, San Francisco. It's a delight to be here and, and, and see such great enthusiasm in the audience and to hear such fantastic panelists. And, and thanks to MIT for hosting us again. <clears throat> so I'm here to present the uh, Energy Technology and Innovation Award. And uh, I, I'm, it has a real personal meaning to me. But let me just uh, frame it a little for you. Uh, certainly when it comes to achieving our clean energy goals, transportation is a big problem. Uh, we, we see that in this country, some 30% of carbon emissions are re related to transportation. In my state, where I live, California, it's more like 40%. Uh, and yet, Americans have a love affair with their cars. I don't think any of us are going to give them up. And a lot of Americans like really fast cars, like that go from zero to 60 in four or five seconds. So we, we definitely have a problem here. We've been working it over the decades with incremental progress, really, just shaving off, uh, getting slightly better gas mileage, nothing totally revolutionary, uh, and, and still uh, those troubling numbers. Um, more recently, we've seen a new entrant. We've seen a new way of thinking, uh, new talents brought to bear on this, this problem, uh, a new attitude, certainly, and an entirely new vision for how to make progress in this important arena in a way that really moves the needle. So in case any of you have been living on Mars waiting for Elon Musk to show up there, <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm, I'm, I'm talking, the rest of you know I'm talking about Tesla Motors. Um, Tesla is America's first really badass clean tech leader. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's not only an innovation leader um, success story, it's, it's also become an aspirational icon of, for clean energy advocates across the globe. It really has developed a life of its own. My firm, D Bell Investors, was really privileged to be an early investor in Tesla. Um, and we spent just countless hours around the board table for several years confronting every obstacle imaginable and, and just legions of them. I'm happy to say that many of those have, have gone away, are really ancient history. As a result, of, of that really personal nature of, of this company, I couldn't be happier to present the award for energy innovation and technology to Milo, Milo Werner, who, who is the, the um, leader of the new product introduction department at Tesla Motors. So Milo has been at Tesla for about six years. Uh, she's been involved in developing the powertrains for the uh, Toyota RAV4. She worked on the, the Daimler electric smart car, and of course, the beloved Model S. Um, Milo's team has been instrumental to the company's successful ability to launch um, the Model S. Her, her team played a critical role in the commercialization of the vehicle's technology, including the battery pack, the motor, the inverter, the charger, the supercharger. And in less than six months, Milo's team moved the development lines into the new uh, facility, the, the plant in Fremont. And, she, and her, she, uh, Milo and her team played a very large role in supporting the ramp to full production. Milo has also done something that's really, really important in innovation. She's, she's played a, a very significant role in developing Tesla's product strategy, whereby she integrates product development with launch operations. And, and that's uh, one of the things that happened at Tesla in the early days is people said, oh, go make the car in China or Mexico. And that was a big no-no. And I mean, A, we wanted, we wanted an American-made car. But B, it's important to keep R&D and development together with manufacturing in those early days. And that's something Milo knows. And, and, and Milo has, played a, has, has helped Tesla get to where it is today by 
by pulling together engineering operations, product launch, and production change control all under one group. And that's, that's been a, some of the secret sauce that allows Tesla to innovate at a much quicker pace than traditional car companies. At Tesla, the culture is all about leadership. It's all about accepting personal responsibility for your actions and working hard and, and, and really having that vision. Milo embodies this culture, and she creates leaders around her. She's developed a whole a set of leaders at, at Tesla in, in her team, and that was highlighted in the, in the last year with the, the release and, and ramp up of the Model S when head, headcount grew 500%, uh, and Milo was able to continue the, the development of, of her team and nurture ownership and vision that's required in, in, what, in companies that are of a startup nature and that have a bit of chaos always underlying the, the um, right under the surface. But Milo's leadership doesn't stop at the Fremont plant or the Palo Alto headquarters of, of Tesla. She is an active leader in the community. Uh, she, she is a mentor and a, a confidant to students. She hosts all kinds of gatherings to to, for entrepreneurs, for startup companies, for people involved in, in clean, clean energy and clean technology. And she gives up her time in, in, a, in a very generous way and in a very meaningful way for those around her. So before I turn the, <laughs> the microphone over to Milo, uh, I want to point out that Milo has been able to accomplish all of these wonderful things in what is a very male-dominated com company. I mean, we all know that technology, we know the numbers in terms of uh, number of women in technology and so in Silicon Valley and, and Tesla is, is, is very much a part of that. But Tesla's also a car company uh, and the car industry is, is also very male dominated. So you have a very particular culture at Tesla that is, uh, you know, plus there are a lot of gearheads there. There are people that talk for hours about you know, the merit, relative merits between BMW and Mercedes and how fast is, really is, is the acceleration of that Porsche and on and on and on. And so it, it, it's a very special culture, but it, it's one that takes a, a certain uh, kind of individual to, to, to flourish. And I'm just so pleased to see that Milo has, is thriving and leading at Tesla. So please join me in congratulating Milo Werner for the C3E Award for Technology Innovation and Development. Well, thank you. It's, it's absolutely amazing to be up here. It's been six long years of blood, sweat, and tears at Tesla. Um, yes, um, so thank you very much. It's just, it's amazing to be here. Um, probably first off, I, I need to thank um, all the support that I've had to do this. Um, my mother, who's here, Somewhere. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> um, I have to thank, you know, my husband and um, their two children, my two children, and <laughs> all the, the nights and weekends I spend at work. He's home, you know, making mac and cheese happily. Um, and um, Tesla has really provided all the support I could possibly want. I've had two children while I've been at Tesla, and they have been... Um, Super supportive, amazing. So thank you, Tesla. Um, and so then today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about kind of Tesla's new product strategy. I probably have like three minutes. But for all of you who are developing um, products in-house, the, the strategy that we really use is, is very different than many other strategies that companies use developing hard goods. And that is fundamentally integrating um, product development, the engineering, with the operations launch. Um, 
So it's a, it's a four-step um, iterative cycle that, that really leverages um, rapid prototyping um, to mature the design and manufacturability. And um, we go through this iteration four times, um, and we have, these are our four key areas of the cycle. So it starts in determining our objectives, and that's kind of where we determine the product um, specs. Uh, we'll do some engineering and manufacturing design, some prototyping and validation and planning. And so this spiral circle is really characteristic of software design, um, but we have taken it and applied it to hardware design. And so here, you'll see we do kind of our first loop of proof of concept. This happens like exclusively in the engineering lab. They make like one or two, just to show that it works, that our idea is, gonna, is going to be able to be manufacturable. And, and one of the key steps here to this spiral process is the prototyping process. So here, you know, in the early stages, it's happening in the engineering lab. Um, but as we go into our next stage of building all the engineering validation prototypes, we really encourage and welcome the manufacturing engineering community and the operations community into the building of those next phase of prototypes. Um, they, they're, they set up the line for just building the next like 10 prototypes. So set up a development line. It'll be, you know, kind of our first stab at what the production line might look like. We'll bring in our, our production tooling. Maybe we'll bring in a wave solder machine or we'll bring in some of our production tooling that we're going to use and try it out. And the next phase is really the manufacturability phase. This is where we're really nailing down how the product is going to be made. These parts are, are form, fit, and function, but they're often not off production tooling. They're, they're soft tooled. Um, but the line should be really laid out the way that we wanted to lay, lay it out. Um, we're measuring cycle times. We're measuring flow. We're measuring um, kind of how this line is going to perform in mass production. And then finally, we're, we move over to our main manufacturing facility. We just duplicate this line in the manufacturing facility. It's the pilot line. And this is where we're bringing up all our systems in the background, which include MRP, MES, you know, our online shop floor control systems, um, all the background support that happens on the factory floor from uh, technicians to um, supervisors, line associates. And so this is really how we're integrating both the engineering design and the operations. And I know that so many of you here in the clean deck industry are faced with having to make a product um, that is really a hard good product that maybe you can't outsource because you're doing process development, manufacturing development. And so I encourage you to come and talk to me um, to kind of ex explore this this development process uh, for yourself. Um, and so anyway, so I want to thank you. Um, this is just a wonderful conference. Everybody here has been amazing. Um, and it's a really inspirational award. So thank you.